When I, 34, was 14, my parents passed away in a car accident. We had a great aunt who was still alive but she lived hours away and was considered too old and sickly to have custody of minors. My sister, 39, Kate was 19, so she was given custody of me and our little sister. To prevent us from becoming homeless and being thrown in foster care, Kate left school and worked as an easy girl. Doing that on top of a cashier job was the only way she could adequately pay our rent and buy food for us. It was only for a short time, as it allowed Kate to get enough money to take courses and become certified as a hairstylist. Kate eventually was able to get a GED and now owns her own beauty salon. But Kate admits her time as an easy girl was the darkest point in her life and me and our little sister have never forgotten the sacrifice Kate made for us. At our engagement party, me and my fiancé, 32, Lily were talking to Kate and her husband John. Kate talked about her and John planning a Hawaiian vacation and wanting to go this year with my nephew, too, Philip. But they decided it would be better to just save for a few more years and focus some of their money on repairs for the salon. I agreed that it would also be better to wait because Philip will be older and able to remember and appreciate the trip. But then Lily sneered at Kate and said how if you want extra money, you can always quit the salon and go back to being who you are for a living. Not like anywhere else can trust a high school dropout with a job. Kate started crying and John led her away to comfort her. I told Lily to go somewhere else immediately. I didn't care where she went. Just leave so I didn't have to look at her. Lily argued but I snapped at her to get out of my sight until she left. My future in-laws are calling me heartless and cruel towards Lily. They say that Lily's going to be my wife soon so I can't just send her away every time we have a disagreement and should have done the mature thing by talking rather than publicly sending her away and humiliating Lily. I realize what I did was humiliating to Lily and it was not the greatest way to handle the situation, but I'm still struggling to look at Lily after knowing she thought those things of Kate. Was I an idiot for sending Lily away? What kind of person is your soon-to-be wife to just blurt that out of the blue? That's a huge red flag. Has she ever talked to you in private about Kate's previous time? Or was this just out of nowhere? I mean that's a freaking bomb to drop in the middle of casual conversation about a trip. Like seriously, who the hell does your wife think she is? Not only is it horribly disrespectful and wrong, Kate's sacrifice was instrumental in keeping you out of foster care and becoming the husband your fiancé wants to marry. Not the idiot. I audibly gasped when I read what your fiancé said to your sister. How horribly cruel and completely unnecessary. Kate sacrificed so much in order to ensure her siblings had food on the table at the end of the day and I'm in awe at the strength it took her to do that when she was practically still a child herself. Your fiancé basically shat on and shamed every sacrifice Kate ever made for you. The man she supposedly loves till death do you part, in an unprovoked and vicious way. Please reconsider if this is the person to whom you wish to be married. You owe your sister more than binding yourself, and your family, forever to such a callous person. Not the idiot. But dude, this wasn't a disagreement. This was your future wife trying to and succeeding in hurting your sister. Your sister who dropped out of school and did work that she hated, and was illegal and scorned in society, to keep you alive and safe. You aren't the idiot here. But if you're not reconsidering this marriage you would be one. This is not okay. Why would you want to spend the rest of your life with someone who treats you and your sister with such disrespect? I have four kids Lucas, 24, Jace, 22, Henry, 17, and Katie, 16. When Katie was born I was very worried that we might end up favoring and spoiling her since she is our only daughter and youngest child. I tried my best to never show favoritism and always treat my kids equally but it turned out the opposite of what I expected. My wife clearly favors our sons. I tried everything, I talked to her, tried therapy, asked her parents to talk to her, showed her research about the negative effects of favoritism but nothing worked. For each kid's 16th birthday I helped them buy a car. They each had to save money and I would double the money they have saved and buy a car with it. We also have a tradition that the birthday boy slash girl will choose all the plans for that day, where we go, what we eat etc. That was also the plan for Katie's birthday. On the day of Katie's birthday Henry had a basketball game and my wife told us she wants to go with Henry instead of coming with us to celebrate Katie's birthday because apparently it was an important game. Henry told her she didn't have to come but she insisted she wanted to be there. We argued over this but she ended up going there and Jace went with them as well. 
I asked Katie what she wanted to do but she bursted out crying and said she doesn't want to do anything. Lucas went to her room and talked to her and finally convinced her to come with us but she refused to choose what to do and was silent the whole time so I did the only thing I knew would make her happy. I took her to a car shop and told her she can choose whatever she wants and I'll pay for it and she gets to keep all the money she saved. It really improved her mood. She chose a car and then we went to her favorite restaurant then they left me and went out together because apparently they wanted some sibling time and I'm too old for what they wanted to do. When she came back home she seemed very happy and told me she loved her birthday. When my wife heard about it she got mad at me and said I had no right to buy a car without talking to her and it's not fair that Katie got a new car for free when our sons had to save money for a used car. I know it was probably wrong to do this but it made Katie happy and Lucas thinks I did right. I really wanted to say you're an idiot, because that's a big decision to make without asking your partner. But, given that you walked into a dealership and said pick a car, it's on me, I'm assuming you have some degree of screw you money, so we'll go with the assumption that's not an issue. Not the idiot, but I would maybe like, talk to your sons, who seem innocent in all this, about why you did it, and maybe do something nice for them too. Wow, your wife couldn't even spend the day with her daughter on her birthday, that's disgusting on your wife's part. I have to question why you are still with her when she treats your daughter like this. Your oldest said you did the right thing for Katie, I'm sure he'd have let you know if he thought you were in the wrong, sounds like he is very aware of what is going on and is understanding of you trying to make up for it. Not the idiot. You're making up for the lack of effort on your wife's part, she can be mad all she wants. If she had been there then maybe you could have talked to her but she wasn't. I'm glad your kiddo had a good 16th birthday and I hope this doesn't cause too many issues in the family. I, 17, have a half-sister on my dad's side, Jasmine, 27. Me and Jasmine aren't super duper close but she's very nice, we do keep in touch and just vent about life. Dad isn't very understanding towards Jasmine? I don't really know how to put it. But from what I've seen and heard he's very pushy towards her and almost always makes some remark about how she's not doing enough. Mom doesn't like her much and says that she doesn't respect them. Jasmine has a friend John, early, mid 30 SM. I put quotation marks because it's obvious she and John are a lot more than friends and she has told me before that she loves him, but she refers to him as a friend in front of mom and dad, although they also suspect otherwise. John lives in a neighbor state to us. Jasmine was going to catch a train there and meet him at the station long story short and from the details I heard, mom got hold of Jasmine's phone when she came over at some point and blocked John's number. She has her Gmail on her phone, which mom also blocked John's email from. Jasmine didn't realize until way later. This caused a huge misunderstanding between them she basically went to the station, waited for hours and he didn't show up. Jasmine was in a really bad state and I couldn't believe my parents could pull something like that. So I asked them and mom said she and dad thought this needed to be done for her own good. I shouted at them, threatening to call the cops if they don't apologize to Jasmine and try to make things right, side note, I don't know if the cops would do anything in this case or if they're relevant, I just said it in the moment. Dad said I was butting into adult matters and I was too young to understand, I said I understood enough and called him a human trash can. They said I need to mind my mouth and apologize to them, which I refused to. Mom said how she can't believe I'd act like this and I've picked up on Jasmine's tendencies. My uncle came over the other day and I heard dad crying to him about how he's so hurt by his daughter, me. I think what I said was justified but there's quite a few people telling me I'm in the wrong, so did I go too far with my outburst? Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. At face value, from what you're saying, you aren't in the wrong. She is 27 years old and can make her own decisions. And while this wouldn't justify doing what your mom did, she had to have had a reason to block his number and email that made it right in her head. Do you know if John has done anything bad to Jasmine that she just didn't want to expose you to? It might be worth the ask. And more than likely, the cops wouldn't have done anything but also, why is your dad so upset about you calling him some stupid name? Every parent has dealt with that before. Not the idiot for what they did to your sister. If I was her I would go no contact with them until at least they apologize to both her and John. However, you do have the right to be angry. You were protecting your sister. However, threatening the police, that won't get you anywhere. It's clear your parents have lost your respect. Respect is not just given, it needs to be earned. They will need to earn your respect back, especially that of your sisters. 
Not the idiot. Jasmine is a grown adult and can choose with whom she dates. Your parents were way out of line by blocking him on her phone, her private property. If my parents did that I'd be going LC or NC for a long while, not just for interfering with my dating life but also for the gross violation of privacy. Your parents sound like major idiots. My dad is married to Emma. Emma's son is Kyle and I have known Kyle since I started kindergarten. Kyle became my bully in the second grade. He thought my friends and I were weird and so he made it his mission to bully all of us. He called us names, tried to embarrass us in class, has tripped us up on a number of occasions. Then when my mom died he made fun of me for being upset and crying in class. His most cutting remark that my mom died because she couldn't take how much of a baby I was. My dad and Emma were always called into the school over the bullying. They met countless times and during one of those interactions they hit it off enough to start dating. My dad told me pretty much straight away and asked me to be okay with it. I wasn't. I asked how he could do that to me. He said he found someone to make him happy again and Kyle and I might get along better. I told him I didn't want to get along with Kyle better, I wanted to never see him again. My dad and Emma got married. At their wedding I made a stand to not pose for family photos. Kyle was laughing at me the whole time and made the jab aw, his baby missing his mommy and then called me pathetic. It's been 4 years since they got married and my dad and Emma have really tried to push this narrative that Kyle and I are brothers. I still hate him. I have corrected every single person, including them, who calls us brothers. Kyle did eventually stop with the making fun of me and bullying, but the damage is done. For the most part he acts like I don't exist and grumbles to his mom when she tries to make us spend time together. Recently Emma arranged for some family photos since there are no photos of all of us together. She decided it would be better not to tell me or Kyle and hope that we would just go along with it. I did not. I said Kyle is the last person I will ever consider my family and my life would have been much better without him ever being in it. Dad said to calm down, because it was sounding like I hated Kyle, and I told him I did. I told him I hated him as well for marrying the mother of my bully and how he had betrayed me. Emma did not like hearing that I hate Kyle and now she's I guess doubting their marriage because she has visions of us being friends in the future. My dad told me I am destroying his marriage by refusing to let go of the past and trying to move on. He said what Kyle did was awful but what I'm doing is far worse because I'm old enough to know better and to work on forgiving since Kyle doesn't bully me anymore. I told him I don't care if I destroy his marriage because it never should have happened in the first place. I told him I would never care about Kyle, I would never want him to be in my life and I would rather not see him any more than have Kyle in my life. The conflict between us is still ongoing. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. Marrying the parent of your child's bully and effectively forcing your child to not only be around said bully but also be family with them, all while completely dismissing your child's clear feelings regarding this, that's freaking crappy parenting and terribly selfish. Why should you have to bear with it and make amends when your bully never actually apologized and instead continues to be a bully? Stand your ground on this matter, not the idiot. You make clear your boundaries at every point. It sounds like your dad may have been motivated to ignore your wishes because he thought it was simple childhood stuff that you would grow out of. He clearly misinterpreted. I wonder why there weren't multiple efforts to curb Kyle's bullying, especially at the wedding. Your dad should look very seriously at the possibility that you will barely be in his life when you're an adult. That said, if he offers you individual or family counseling, I would take it. Also, why did Kyle stop bullying you? Did he grow out of it or was it another reason? Not the idiot. Your dad and Emma met by them being called into the school to address Kyle bullying you? And they thought that could be the start of a beautiful friendship? Not the idiot. Your dad has done you a great disservice. You made your stance clear as a child and were dismissed and ignored and have affirmed it ever since. Now you're finally old enough that they find it hard to ignore you and they suddenly disagree with what you've been telling them for years. I'm sorry you've had to put up with all of that. And Kyle sounds like crap. When we were planning our wedding there was a clash between my mom and my wife, who already didn't get along the best, because my wife believed that as the bride, she gets to dictate a color scheme for immediate family. My mom thought she was a control freak and just made that up. Somehow she got my mom to agree to wear gold, but then something terrible started, because neither of them could figure out what gold meant. My wife thought the dresses my mom picked were too light and more of a champagne. The ones my wife was showing her were bronze and my mom refused to wear brown. 
I was getting annoyed, because neither of them seemed to know what gold was, and it seemed like a difficult color to begin with. Also my mom won't shop online for anything formal or fitted, and apparently there just aren't that many gold dresses around. This led to so much tension that my mom said she wasn't coming. My wife knew I was going to my mom's house to talk to her and supported that. When I got there my mom was serious that she wasn't coming. She wouldn't even let me in her house. I finally told my mom that she was at least partially right, and she could wear another color as long as it wasn't a dark pink color dress, Mills color, black color dress, bridesmaids, or white color dress or anything white passing. My mom agreed and wore turquoise. I was honestly hoping my wife would just be too happy to notice, but she did notice. She wasn't that upset, but did tell me what an idiot my mom is. I told her discreetly that I told her she didn't have to wear the gold as it wasn't working. She was annoyed but moved on since it was our wedding day. When we got back from the honeymoon she told me how much it pissed her off and that I betrayed her and now my mom is never going to respect us, because we aren't a united front. You are the idiot, because you should have told your wife immediately that you rescinded the color requirement for your mom. Instead, you let your mother look like the villain to your wife on your wedding day which is definitely not helping the relationship between them. Basically throwing your mom under the bus because you couldn't stand up to your wife before the wedding. Not cool. Everyone's the idiot here. Your wife is being overly controlling. As long as your mom isn't wearing a color slated for anyone else, and as long as her dress isn't disruptive, this shouldn't be an issue. Turquoise is a lovely color. But you should have addressed the issue as it was rather than appearing to pick sides behind your wife's back. Y'all need to be able to work these things out if you're getting married. You are the idiot. Seriously? The drama might have been petty, but you went behind your wife's back for your wedding to say that something she very clearly wasn't okay with was okay. That's not being a teammate. That's not being a partner. That's going against your wife's wishes on what should be one of the happiest days of your lives. This tells me you're incapable of having a constructive and rational discourse with your wife. So, not only did you tell your mom that she could wear a different color, but you did so without telling your wife.